In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we read, God blessed them. God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. This commandment from God to the first man and woman is known as the Dominion Mandate. The Dominion Mandate is God's mission statement for mankind. By exploring this mission statement, we can come to understand God's plan for us in each of the seasons of life. As we think about subduing and having dominion over the fish of the sea, we can see that it is a good and noble endeavor to explore and exploit the resources that God has given to us beneath the surface of the waters. This course will help you acquire the knowledge you need to explore, subdue, and take dominion of your underwater world, focusing primarily on the use of SCUBA, which stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. Once you have mastered this material, contact the Homeschool Advantage for more information about special trips that will enable you to become a certified diver and to join other students in exploring God's creation under the water. The first step in becoming an underwater explorer is to become totally at ease in the water. You need to learn to swim well and to be able to swim submerged without having to hold your nose. Always be careful of diving headfirst into water. Many people have become severely injured or paralyzed because they dove headfirst into the water, hit something with their heads, and suffered a head injury or a broken neck. It's hard to tell now since all of my hair is going gray, but for many years I had one spot of white hair on the top of my head where I dove head first off the stern of our boat while anchored in shallow water off Palomanitos Island in the Vieques Sound and hit my head on a piece of coral. That dangerous maneuver resulted in my being airlifted from the boat by a Coast Guard helicopter and spending the next few harrowing hours in a Puerto Rican hospital. Feet first is better than head first. The second step is to learn to snorkel. Snorkeling involves swimming across the surface of the water while observing what is underneath. The three most common pieces of equipment used in snorkeling are the dive mask, the snorkel, and swim fins. Let's talk about each one of these important pieces of gear. God designed the human eye to be able to focus on light that is traveling through the air. Water refracts light at a different angle from air, which can be seen in these photos. Notice that both the pipe and the soda straw appear to bend. However, it is actually the light that bends. The result is that when you open your eyes underwater, they cannot focus properly and everything is blurry. A dive mask solves this problem by maintaining an air space in front of your eyes, allowing your eyes to focus properly underwater. Dive masks typically feature one or two plates of tempered glass set in a skirt of rubber or silicone. Under pressure, this rubber skirt makes a watertight seal against the skin. Notice how this mask has a rubber seal around the inside. This is to make a better seal against your face. When choosing a mask, you want to hold it to your face and inhale to create a slight vacuum. If the mask seals to your face without leaking air, then you know you have a good fit. Your mask should have a flexible rubber nose piece so that you can hold your nose and gently blow while descending to equalize the pressure in your ears. The mask is held in place by an adjustable elastic strap 
which goes around the back of the head. The second piece of equipment you need to learn to use is a snorkel. A snorkel is a tube used for breathing air from above the surface when the snorkeler's mouth and nose are submerged. It is usually L or J shaped on the end and fitted with a mouthpiece made of rubber or plastic. Most snorkelers attach their snorkel to the strap of their dive mask with a rubber or plastic retainer like this. A snorkel may have a splash guard at the top to help keep water out of the snorkel when a wave washes over it. It may also have a sump at the bottom, like this one, so that if there is a little water in the snorkel, it drains into the sump and not into your mouth. This snorkel also has a purge valve, which is a one-way valve at the bottom of the sump. By blowing out forcefully, you can force water through the valve, making it easier to clear the snorkel of water. If you use a snorkel with a purge valve, you need to make certain to not get sand in the valve, because then it will leak and become a source of annoyance when in use. In a future lesson, you will learn some ways to clear your snorkel of water. The third equipment item is a pair of swim fins. There are different kinds of fins for different types of aquatic activities. But the basic anatomy of a swim fin is some type of blade that attaches to the foot. There are two main groups of fins, full-footed and open-heeled. Full-footed fins fit like a shoe and are designed to be worn over bare feet or perhaps over socks or thin-soled swim booties. An open heel fin has a foot pocket with an open heel area and the fin is held in place by springs or straps. These fins can be worn over diving boots and are popular with scuba divers. Once you have donned your snorkeling gear, you simply lay face down in the water and breathe through the snorkel. By gently kicking with your legs extended, your fins will propel you across the surface. The act of going beneath the surface of the water is called underwater diving. There are three broad categories of underwater diving. Number one, breath holding also called free diving. Number two, scuba, where the diver's equipment is completely self-contained and there is no link to the surface. And number three, surface supplied diving, which means diving while breathing a gas which is supplied by a diver's umbilical. Before we begin actual in the water training for each exercise, we will learn the science that will help us understand the unique challenges and dangers of taking dominion of the world underwater.